two rivers out of Quechee Regional Commission's step up to button up presentation. Um, my name is Jeff Martin, and I'm the Regional Energy Coordinator with Two Rivers. Uh, and I'm joined today um, by Becca White, who is the uh, Customer Engagement Manager with Efficiency Vermont, and also Julia Guy. She's the AmeriCorps Vista Energy Savings Outreach Specialist with Vital Communities. Um, and for those of you that don't know Becca, she's really I th helped to lead the uh, the button up program for the past couple of years and she's done I think a fantastic job of uh, of adapting the campaign this year it was typically you know, a lot of outreach and meeting with people um, and so she's come up with some creative ways of uh, meeting the challenges of doing this all online and so we'll learn more about that in just a minute and thank you Becca for your your efforts and and for being here today um, and Julia, again, she's she's with Vital Communities. Um, and Vital, if you don't know about Vital Communities, they're a nonprofit that serves uh, the Upper Valley. It looks like Anna Mejia is here as well from Vital Communities. Um, so check them out. They've got uh, all kinds of great projects and programs going on, everything from energy to local food systems to uh, workforce housing development. And Julia is helping to run one of those programs, which is the Energy Savings Outreach Campaign. Another one that uh, was really intended to be about getting out and meeting with people, door knocking, but it's had to pivot. Um, so we'll hear from Julia about how that's going and what you can do to get involved. Let's... Um, so before we get started, just a quick overview of the Two Rivers Atacuichi Regional Commission. Um, if you don't know about us, we're an association of 30 municipalities in East Central Vermont with primary goals are to advocate for the needs of our member towns and to advance a shared vision for the region. Um, this commission staff provides technical services to local, state, and federal levels of government and also to the region's nonprofits and businesses. Um, so you could sign up for our newsletter um, by emailing Tori Littlefield. Lots of great information on everything going, going on in our region and opportunities for grants and programs, things like that. Um, you can find us on our website, uh, like us on Facebook, and you have my email address there. You can contact me uh, with any questions. And just a quick overview of our energy program at Two Rivers. Um, we do things from you know assisting um, towns with their energy chapters and planning. So if your town's going through a revision of the town plan and the energy chapter, we can provide technical assistance, data analysis, mapping. Um, we support, we have some funding right now through the end of the year to support uh, energy committees. And I see Jeff Gephardt just joined. He's with the Rochester Energy Committee. And we're helping to start a Tri-Town Energy Committee with Hancock, Pittsfield, and Rochester. So the, those are all towns that wanted to form energy committees but uh, didn't have enough people to start their own. So we've got a regional uh, committee that's going to kick off in December. Um, so if your town is looking for support with your energy committee or you don't have an energy committee, want to form one, um, we, we have some, some time to support that through the end of the year. And then my position is the Intermunicipal Regional Energy Coordinator. I'm working with six towns, Barnard, Fairley, Sharon, Stratford, Thetford, and Woodstock, um, all in our region to lower energy consumption costs and greenhouse gas emissions, range of projects from um, making energy improvements in municipal buildings to community solar to greening the municipal vehicle fleets. Um, so that's been an exciting program to start. It just started in August. Uh, if you're interested or have questions, feel free to contact me at the email address. And finally, um, we help support outreach and trainings related to energy. So of course we're doing this button up presentation today. Um, but we will have a training, we'll be hosting a training on the Energy Action Network's Community Energy Dashboard, probably early to mid-December, waiting for, the going to totally update that dashboard. So we're waiting for that to happen and then we'll, we'll do a training on that. So if you're interested, we'll be getting the word out through energy committees. Uh, but again, contact me, I'll make sure you get the invite. So with that, I'll stop talking. I'll turn it over. Um, here's our agenda for the day. We've got first, Becca will be presenting on stepping up to button up an overview of the program. 
then she'll do a deeper dive into tips for landlords and, and renters. And then we'll turn it over to Julia to talk about the energy savings outreach campaign. Um, we've got a lot to cover. So we'll go through each of these presentations and then we'll take questions at the end. I think we should have plenty of time for questions. So I'll turn it over to Becca. Cool, thanks, Jeff. Uh, and I'll just start by saying I see a lot of familiar faces and names on the call today. So I'll try to gear a little bit of this towards what you might message to folks who might be thinking about weatherization as well. So you can use this information in your community too. Because uh, I know many of you uh, have probably heard uh, the upcoming slide about sweaters and windbreakers, uh, which if you haven't, sneak peek, it's very exciting. Um, so if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, Jeff. Uh, so Button Up Vermont, we are a partner-driven campaign that happens in the fall. Uh, the idea of greening up uh, in the spring in Vermont, cleaning up our communities, and then in the fall and pre-winter months, uh, which are not as long as you think they are, we're in it already. Uh, we spend that time buttoning up our homes by weatherizing them, by insulating, air sealing, and doing all sorts of other projects that can help us lower our energy use uh, through the winter months. Uh, and what's great about the campaign is we've got all these fabulous uh, participating organizations, very familiar names to this group. Uh, and then the next slide, uh, we also have all of our electric utilities, for the most part, who participate uh, in the campaign. So that's an exciting change from previous years. We've got a lot of buy-in from our utility companies, uh, which is just wonderful. Uh, so today, as Jeff uh, introduced, I'm going to be spending some time telling you about what buttoning up is and then how to get started. Uh, so yeah. Next slide. Thank you. Okay, this is this is the winner, folks. This is the slide that is my favorite. Uh, and for this group, you probably know a bit about weatherization. But what I love about this slide is just the fact that it breaks it down in a very simple way to understand the importance of why we talk about weatherization. Why is it such a hot topic in our state? Uh, and it's because we know from building science that insulating our homes just like wearing a big sweater, that is great for allowing us to have, uh, to keep our body temperatures at the right level, to keep us warm when we go outside. Same thing for our homes, insulating, keeping it warm, but that's not enough. We have to take it one step further and add that windbreaker, add that air sealing uh, to actually combine uh, the two things together to maximize comfort and savings. So I, I put on my button-up scarf, as Jeff noted, with my button-up pin. Uh, so I just need a windbreaker to do that. And I'd love for, since we got some energy committees on the call, yeah, add a base layer. Good point, Jeff. Some long johns with, oh, with vapor barrier control. Now that is perfect. I might have to add that to future presentations. Um, great point. Uh, so on top of the whole conversation around sweaters and windbreakers, I did want to note for this group, I'm trying to think creatively about how we can, in a socially distant way, potentially promote the campaign next year. And I did hear a really cool idea about hanging clothing out, like hanging a clothing line um, from a recent VCRD presentation. So if folks, if anyone is interested in that concept, maybe something physical in your community with a sweater or windbreaker, Put a little note on that. I'd love to loop back around. Uh, so the next slide uh, is just really explain the stack effect, which for folks who are involved in the conversation around weatherization, you know that when heat rises, that principle of how warm air rises, when, there, when you have holes or leaks in your home, the hot air basically escapes through those holes. And then you get like it just keeps combining itself it stacks on top that cold air and draft that then comes through the basement uh so that effect is really what causes um us to have to expend and use more energy to heat and cool our homes uh and some common leaks that attribute we can attribute to that would be like your vents your attic hatches chimneys recessed lighting outlets all sorts of places like that where you can see air leaks and this slide I also think is important for just narrowing down where you might prioritize your insulation, what matters when we combine the info you just heard about the stack effect 
Uh, and then the importance of putting insulation uh, in the places where you have the most common um, leak. So basically where you have contact with that windbreaker, quote unquote, is where you might prioritize your insulation. And for the next slide, for this group, you might already know the four pillars of why you would button up your home. Uh, so I'm going to spend a bit more time on um, the save money piece today, because what I hear from Vermonters consistently is how do I put that investment into my home to get the benefits of increasing comfort, reducing carbon pollution, and saving energy? For a lot of folks, a barrier to the upfront piece is what holds them back. So when we think about saving money, there's a lot of ways that you can calculate the value of weatherizing your home when it comes to then reducing your fuel usage or other source of energy that you might use to heat and cool your home. So the case study that I always use is my house, um, which is when we, we weatherized through the button up program back when Jeff was still uh, at Hartford town um, energy coordinator. Uh, and we found that we were able to get a loan to cover the cost of weatherizing our home with the incentives added into that to cut the cost. And we ended up paying less to pay off the weatherization loan than we were going to be paying in fuel. So we essentially cut our monthly costs and we're paying less than we needed to, to actually get the same benefit. And on top of that, we saved energy. So for me, that's really important, thinking about our impact on the community. And then for increased comfort, this space that I'm in, this office, we couldn't use it for parts of the year because it just would get way too hot or it was way too cold. So even having a room in our house that I can use year round, that additional comfort is big. Um, so this is my guilt-free plug that if you have a room in your house, that you are not using because of temperature control, you can weatherize. And that is a great solution. You don't need to live your life like that. Vermonters struggle with that concept sometimes. You don't need to have a weird room you don't use in your house. Weatherization, <laughs> especially now when we're all stuck at home. Uh, so that is a bit about why you should button up. The next slide um, just highlights that reducing carbon pollution piece, which I know is close to the hearts of anyone who's on an energy committee. Uh, when we think about our comprehensive energy goals and even the new additional legislation with the Global Warming Solutions Act, Vermont needs to consider step, we need to step up, um, not to use the language of the presentation, we need to step up and button up our homes to meet our carbon pollution reduction goals. So this is a key piece to that. Yeah. So how do you get started? Uh, the first opportunity is income eligible weatherization. Uh, free weatherization services are available throughout the state. For this area, it's Sevka. Uh, if you happen, I, I think Two Rivers covers just Sevka. Do you have any capstone maybe too? I think I there know. are capstone as well. You get some capstone. Um, so that's an opportunity. Your community action agency, either Sevka or capstone, um, would be the first place to start. Uh, next is comprehensive weatherization with the Home Performance with Energy Star uh, Network. We've got our uh, Efficiency Excellency Network contractors. That is for folks who want to do a project that uh, weatherizes their home um, with that air sealing insulation conversation. We have incentives available for that uh, through Efficiency Vermont. Uh, right now, it's up to 50% of the uh, of the value of of the cost of a job, up to a thousand dollars, and then uh, it just. I apologize for he being hesitant. It's changing, and as I speak, uh, we're going to be seeing in 2021 a change. So I'm just gonna plug them into the chat at the end um, so folks can see it because I wanna make sure I get my percentages right. Uh, and then for the DIY rebate, I'll talk a little bit more about that. That's $100 if you do a DIY project, uh, if you do three of the six projects that you'll see in a slide coming up. Uh, so the next slide is just that the graphic of all the different community action agencies, as we just noted, Sevka and Capstone would be this group's go-to calls. And then for Vermonters who would like to do a home performance with Energy Star project, 
or any of these eligible projects. Maybe you want to do the full enchilada combined, get in a heat pump, get a maybe change out to a modern wood heating system or change out to more efficient appliances. You can put all of that together into a home energy loan and they're exceptionally low rates. Uh, a question that I've gotten in previous uh, presentations around this uh, is can I do health and safety work underneath the home energy loan? Um, for a lot of Vermonters, we might have knob and tube wiring in our older homes. We might have a pest problem. We might have, um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of issues that we can you can run into with a home. And up to 50% of the total loan amount you take out can be used for health and safety improvements. And the next slide is about the do-it-yourself incentive. Pick any of these three and you can get $100 back. Uh, the one thing I'll note here where it says install a new window, low E storm window or panel, we do qualify window dressers, um, window inserts as uh, you can get the $100 rebate for that. So if you're familiar with window dressers, you can definitely get that as one of the qualifying activities. And I think I'm coming up on my last second to last slide on this piece. Uh, if you are interested in these or you have a resident or person you live near that is interested in this, uh, give them the phone number for customer support or help them schedule a virtual home energy visit. We're coming up on the end of the year, so we've actually extended the offer of virtual home energy visits until the end of December. So I can put that link in the chat, uh, but they're free and they are all online. So if you've got someone who's not quite sure where to start, this is a great opportunity and anyone who's in a participating button up community can sign up. Uh, and if you are talking to someone who might be in a neighboring town, for example, uh, that's fine as well. Um, they can sign up um, just if they're local, thanks to your regional planning commission participating in Button Up. Uh, and then if you want to jump in and find a contractor, there's the find a contractor page. So cool. Good, you guys, you're Sorry. so good at this. No, you're good, Jeff, don't worry. I'm trying to, trying to predict your next move and sometimes I'm a little bit off. No, you're doing great. <laughs> well, they, thank you for that presentation, Becca. And hey, you're up next. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, so for landlords and renters, I think this is so relevant for anyone in the Upper Valley. Uh, when we think about who is being left out of the energy conversation. Uh, it's, it's honestly renters and landlords make up a big portion of that community because we don't necessarily have a solution for one size fits all in the same way we might uh, with our maybe single family homeowner, for example. Uh, so the bulk of what I'm gonna talk about today for renters and landlords uh, is really getting a handle on the fact that there are opportunities for you as a renter or as a landlord. Don't count yourself out yet and there is information for them. Uh, so some efficiency tips. Next slide. There we go. Oh, okay. I see what it did. Oh, it, it like auto saved it. Oh, one of the fun things about this portion of the presentation is there's, um, what do you call it? Animation. So it, like it, you have to click each time. This is just a little note to Jeff to get the next little bullet to pop up, um, which is always exciting. Uh, so uh, for this first one, if you're a renter uh, and you still have thermos control at your home, you can actually do things like setting the heat lower during the daytime. Let's say if you do not work from home right now and you're going out for eight hours, you could lower the temperature for a period of the day. You could also lower it at night if you know that you're going to be nice and warm uh, in one part of your apartment. Uh, the next tip, uh, so there are common spaces that you may have control of uh, when it comes to the lighting. Maybe there's a lamp that you use. Changing those out to LEDs, that's a great option. There's also some secret spots that I always recommend. If you've got like a range hood, for example, above your stove or oven, I know that we were using that as like our pseudo nightlight um, so you don't get lost in the kitchen. Uh, well, that was the oldest light bulb in our whole house. So the one that we're keeping on the longest that we forgot about is the one that we didn't swap out. So tip there. Uh, next, this is the 
most disgusting but most helpful tip I have to give you. Please, please, if you move into a new apartment, I'm saying this out of love, clean out the bathroom fan. Take a vacuum cleaner, get rid of that gunk, and it's not only just like an air quality, you'll feel better once you know none of that stuff is in there, uh, but it also is great for running those uh, pieces of equipment, those bathroom fans, or um, coils under your fridge. All of that runs more efficiently when you don't have all that buildup and gunk. Um, and it's very satisfying. I'll say that. <laughs> um, uh, you can also uh, weather strip your windows and doors. So something that's simple uh, to do. Again, you could get the DIY rebate for that. You do some of that uh, weather stripping and there's $100. So uh, one aspect of uh, modern technology nowadays is that you might think just clicking it off like your TV or your laptop, you might think just clicking it off actually stops it from drawing power. That's not the case. Having um, uh, pieces of electronics still running on idle mode, uh, that can actually drain uh, energy from your home can charge your electric bill every month because you're still pulling energy. We call that like the vampire effect uh, when you don't know that you've got things that are drawing electricity. So either unplug those items or invest in a smart strip, for example. Uh, and then this is, I feel like Vermonters know this one because every other Vermonter I know has somebody who's got them like insulated curtains at one point in their life, but insulated curtains are great. Uh, or just like uh, light reducing curtains, for example, a great opportunity if you're a renter to invest in this product because you can both keep yourself nice and cool in the summer and you can actually uh, keep yourself warm in the winter. Yeah, so I'll just quickly go over the fact, look at this lovely picture to the right, ignore the bad graphics on the left, my apologies. Um, but in the green, it is telling us a bit about uh, weatherization options for renters and landlords. Uh, if you are income eligible and you're a renter, you still have an opportunity to get access to free weatherization services. Uh, if you're a landlord, there's still opportunity to get comprehensive weatherization incentives. Uh, and then of course the DIY rebate is available to either of those parties. And then finally, comprehensive weatherization for multiple units. So if you are a renter in a multi-unit building, great information to let your landlord know. If you know a landlord, give them that information too. It's so hard for us to find this group of people. Uh, and the way that you would do that is you call Efficiency Vermont. That's your first step. Uh, if you own a rental property, you're welcome to call us at our customer support line uh, because there is an option for you. And I know that we're thinking about for 2021 how we can expand that as well. So the number to call, 1-888-921-5990. Um, give us a call to get started. And if you're a renter and you're still trying to figure out ways to save on your electricity bill or your energy use, again, just another great opportunity to reach out and you can get access to the virtual home energy visit even if you are a renter. So there we go. All right, thank you very much for those tips, Becca. I know what you mean with the, with the vents. I just vacuumed out the, my vents and it was disgusting. Yep, so, very uh, satisfying. <laughs> good <like> point. <laughs> I'd recommend it too. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. I think we have time uh, to take a couple of questions. If anyone has questions for, for Becca after those two presentations before we turn it over to, to Julia. So I think there's, you know, we don't have too many people here. So just jump in if you have a question. I was, uh, I had a question, Becca, about the uh, uh, home performance with Energy Star rebate for someone who's not income qualified. Um, what, what is the cap on the incentive at the moment? So I'm going to also put it in the chat as well, just for the um, eligibility requirement. So right now it's 50% um, of a project cost you can get back up to $1,000 for a market rate, someone with a um, a not a moderate income Vermonter. Uh, then if you fall um, under the eligibility, if you are eligible, you can get up to 50% back and $4,000. So I, before I 
I just wanted to make sure I had the numbers right for what that would mean, like where you would fall if you're the $1,000 or the $4,000. For Windsor County, if you're in a household of one, you could qualify for the up to $4,000 if you make uh, at or below $66,800. For two-person household, that would be $76,200. At or below that, you would qualify for the up to $4,000 of incentives and 50% of a project cost. Okay. So it's, it's actually been reduced for folks who are not on the lower end. Yeah. And it had been up to 4000 before, right? Yes, it was up to $2,000 and up to $4,000 and 75% of the project cost. Um, and I'll just speak to that because we had a big surge of folks who took advantage of the weatherization incentives. I think this group can all attest when you make it, when you incentivize something uh, and it is the right amount, people jump on it. And that's exactly what we saw with weatherization. So we will also be seeing a decrease um, in 2021. Uh, but I think as we start to think about weatherization and its value, there might be other opportunities in 2021 as well, but not as rich of an incentive. Okay. Good questions, Jeff. Any other questions for Becca? And if anyone missed it, uh, Becca put those incentives, uh, link to those incentives in the chat there. All right, hearing no other questions. Uh, we'll it's, oh, it's Linda. Not, it's Linda. Yeah. Um, here, I'll turn my video on. Um, just, I want to follow up, <coughs> excuse me, with Becca on this, which is, I just want to understand what's the pot of money that Efficiency Vermont has for these incentives? Clearly, you, ha you have to, you know, end up balancing things off. But is it basically, it's like what gets appropriated by the legislature? Is that what goes into this? that makes it's like, okay, there's X number of funds available and is it a legislative decision? Yeah, Linda, that's such a good question. So I actually, as soon as you started asking, I was like, okay, I gotta pull up my email that like breaks it all out for me. Um, and I would just note, um, it's so important to get advocacy on this issue as well. So shout out to Linda and others who have been advocating for this on a community level and a state level. So as a note, um, we have, um, a budget of around, we've spent a total of 3200000 around um, on weatherization incentives um, from Efficiency Vermont as of so far into 2020. Uh, and that fund is, the revenue that comes to that fund is from Reggie. So if you're from, I, it's a, Reggie can be a, an iceberg of a topic. So if you want more information, I can follow up offline. Um, the energy efficiency charge, so that's that charge that funds Efficiency Vermont on your electric bill, and then also one-time monies that came from Act 62. So it is, it's a mixture of things, but to your point, Linda, like Act 62 funding, for example, played a big part in the incentives we were able to offer. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great question. Can I ask a question? Ginevra. Hi. Hi, Becca. Hi, Jeff. Um, I was just wondering, um, I was sitting here thinking about the power strips that you're talking about um, that sense, um, I guess, like usage. And I went on Efficiency Vermont's website to check out what rebates or like things were available. And it's taking me to, um, the page is not available. Um, I searched advanced power strips and if you click on see offers, it's an error, not found. Um, <gasps> So gasp. So <laughs> um, I would love to be able to tell people um, kind of, yeah, if there is any sort of rebate that maybe should be on here, but isn't because that's something I haven't really been promoting. So that's just a, yeah. Thank you. That is so helpful. We just started, you're not the first person to tell me we've had like a missing link because we just switched over to moving our blog to a different location on the website. So some things like moved over, some things didn't. So thank you, that's really helpful. Um, I'll send that link out if I can seem to find it through another way during this. 
And then one other place to check actually is the marketplace. So Efficiency Vermont has something called the marketplace and you can compare different products on that site. It was really helpful for me when I was looking at a smart thermostat, for example. And it shows you like what rebate information is there too. So I'll put that in the chat um, during this too. Thank you. Good catch. All right, it looks like uh, that's all the questions for now. So Julia, take it away. Actually, Oh, Jeff, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I'm just wondering under the COVID uh, announcements, um, what the status of home performance contractors uh, work is. Are they allowed to work or um, and at their choice? Um, or are they um, not considered essential at this point? Oh, what a good question. Um, I have not seen any updates that have said contractors have to stop working um, if they're signing, if they're scheduling out projects. Efficiency Vermont, at our level, we are not doing any in-person field visits. So I would have to check to see what the state guidance is. I know we have a link that kind of updates that in the kind of construction sector. So let me see if I can find that during Julia's presentation, if anything has changed. Yeah, because early, early on, contractors weren't allowed, and then it was opened up under conditions. Um, yeah. So I don't know what their status is at this point. It's a great question. Other yeah. than they had been real busy. <laughs> yeah. All right, Julia, sorry for all the false starts. <laughs> No, that's okay. these are incredible questions. <laughs> I feel like I could watch a hundred button up presentations and still learn something. So I appreciate it. Let me just make sure I'm presenting the right one. Okay, can y'all see that? Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for, for having us. Um, I'm Julia Guy, um, as Jeff said at the beginning, but I am the AmeriCorps Vista serving at Vital Communities and Anna Mejia is also on the call, our Climate Projects Coordinator. So she might jump in at the end for, um, for some questions. Okay. So we're here today to talk a little bit about our, um, our energy savings project. Um, and that really has, um, is a three-year project to test energy efficiency and outreach strategies to reduce energy burden among specifically mobile home residents. And we're partnering with town energy committees to connect residents with um, immediate and also long-term solutions um, to reduce their energy expenses. So you might be thinking why specifically mobile homes or manufactured homes? They're actually 7% of the Vermont housing stock, which was pretty surprising when I learned that. And they're a really important source of um, affordable housing, especially in rural areas like Vermont. Um, and they tend to be older homes um, built in, in the 70s and, and homes that are built before 1976 also tend to be less energy efficient. So older homes will typically end up in the hands of lower fixed income households. And then those lower income households actually end up spending more on their energy bills, about two times more than the average um, income household. So Additionally, this is a pretty underserved population. We know that um, not a lot of outreach goes on in mobile home communities, um, yet they're exactly the population that would stand to benefit the most. So it's a huge opportunity to make a really big impact where it matters. And it's a smaller, more specific population. Um, so it's really possible to reach out and um, actually talk to everyone um, or reach out to every um, one in your community who might live in a mobile home. So there are two really sort of big overarching goals with this project. Um, the main, the first one would be to reduce energy burden. So reduce how much folks are, are spending on their energy bills. We really don't think that anyone should have to worry about 
heating their home or paying to heat their home, especially this winter when we're spending so much more time at home, like Becca said, you know, telecommuting or working with, with the kids at, at home if they're not able to go to school. So we really want everyone to be able to heat their homes and heat their homes to an, like a comfortable temperature so they're not still freezing and paying more um, in bills than they think they should. And then also connecting folks. We want to make sure that we can build those connections, especially right now when we're spending a lot of time alone. Um, and also making connections with folks who have experience with energy burden and learning from their experience, um, how they've found ways to save, and then sharing that knowledge with others. And then also learning about experiences with services and with programs, if those programs met their expectations, if they think that those programs could be improved and, and how. So what you can expect if, um, if you would like to get involved is that you um, in your town, your town energy committee would sort of build an outreach team of folks who might want to volunteer and get involved. Um, and then you would get trained on current programs through vital communities, programs that exist right now and, and the application process and what it's like to go through that. Um, and that would be recorded um, in, in these times we're doing that virtually. So that would be recorded in case not everyone can make it and you can um, definitely reference it later. And then you would develop an outreach plan. So um, today that looks a little less like door knocking, like Jeff said earlier and, and more on the virtual side of things. So um, maybe doing a direct mailing or phone calls and then lastly, just doing that outreach to residents. So hearing about their successes or challenges, um, maybe through a survey or, or over the phone, and then providing information on potential solutions that could work for them um, through a lit drop or through mail, and then doing follow-up to see if they were able to get services, how that application process was, if they need help with an application, um, and if they think that that process could be made easier. So just to give you a little bit of an idea, um, this is a, a postcard that we created. This is the first mailing that went out. Um, just a, a brief introduction of the, the project and your town energy committee. And then this is our jam packed full of information energy savings guide, which will go out um, actually this week um, to the folks who we're doing outreach with right now. Um, a little bit about programs that are available, um, just a, a smattering of the options and information, how to get more information and how to apply. And then this is a map of um, where we are and where we've been. So it, the pilot um, was conducted last year with Springfield and Hartford. Hartford's got cut short a little bit due, the, due to the pandemic. So they're actually doing a second wave with us now. And then um, Thetford, um, Norwich, um, and Sharon, um, and then along with um, Sustainable Woodstock, Ginevra is actually doing some outreach in their service area as well, which is great. So thank you so much. We would love to hear that was a super quick and, and dirty overview. So if you have any questions, we'd love to hear them. Most of this outreach um, work, um, winding up weatherizing and improving the existing mobile homes that are manufactured housing that you're finding, or is it a replacement like with a Vermont? So initially we wanna see if there is a way to weatherize current homes um, through the weather, uh, free weatherization, no cost weatherization program. Um, we have talked about the, the modular home offerings, but we want, that to sort of come later down the line. There are a few programs that we would um, talk about and do outreach for before we, we talked about um, the mobile home replacement. Is there anything you wanna add to that, Anna? Yeah, I've, just to say that we, we have been in talks with those who have already done that type of outreach. So at Efficiency Vermont and um, SAC at Sustainable Woodstock did some uh, outreach on, sorry, John, uh, did some outreach on, I think it was called then the mobile home replacement program, and now it's called the net zero modular home. Uh, 
So yeah, it, it is among the list of offerings that you'll learn about when you attend one of the trainings. Um, but again, from the feedback that we've gotten both from Efficiency Vermont and um, from Sustainable Woodstock is it's not a program that's really fit for everybody. Um, it's a very specific audience and particularly people who are just not, um, not happy with their current situation. And we're finding that um, many mobile home residents actually feel like, you know, oh, I don't just wanna, you know, uh, get a whole new home. And also because that comes with a lot of um, cost implications, there is a lot of really great rebates, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't necessarily eliminate the, the cost of a, of a mortgage for doing a um, mobile home replacement. Yeah, I guess it's just that you know a lot of the mobile homes are just so bad that it's really hard to to make a fix that's going to be long lasting. Um. Yeah, and I I think that's also a, a very I think a subjective opinion because for some people even though they're spending a lot on their heating bills. Um, it is meeting most of their needs um, in terms of keeping their housing expenses down. As we saw, it's a really important source of affordable housing in our region. So we don't want to, um, what's that saying? Throw, throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> um, they, they still meet, uh, for the most part, we're hearing um, from residents that they, they meet their needs. Um, and if they don't, and if the residents themselves feel that they don't meet their needs and the talking about the net zero modular home program is definitely something we're happy to walk them through. Yeah. Um, Anna and um, Julia, I just wanted to ask, so so at Norwich, we are participating with you and, and I already know Norwich doesn't have very many uh, mobile homes, but I'm just curious as to what the total is of the towns either that you dealt with last year and this year, like about what's the total in those towns? I think I might be able to answer that. Um, yeah. <laughs> at, least for, at least for this wave, and I only know this because of the mailings that we're sending out, right? So I can tell you that the total mailings for this wave of outreach is around 850. Um, so a pretty significant amount. And that's also because we're expanding. Initially, we thought we were only going to do outreach in mobile home parks, not just standalone, you know, on their own land. Um, and the reason we thought that is because, oh, we're doing in-person outreach. It's just so much easier and, and contain community. Um, and then COVID happened. And then it's like, well, that advantage really just went away. So um, we decided if we're just going to go through, we're just going to be doing direct mailings and doing follow-ups. There's no reason why we can't do outreach to um, the other mobile home residents. So that's why we've got such a big list. Uh, and... Um, a lot of the ways that we're getting those addresses, you already know, so I'll just say this for the benefit of others, is through contacting um, the town lister or um, there's a statewide GIS database that I think um, I know one of our one of our town participants was able to pull data from there. Did I answer that question? Other questions for Julia or Anna? Just to just to tag on to that, I, I forgot to mention that Vital Communities does have a budget to help with um, with mailing, so that that's not something that like, town energy committees would have to take on. There there is a budget for us to send out the mailings that you would want to send out. Hello, I live in a mobile home park. Um, there are a lot of young families that can't replace their trailers or also a lot of us are on fixed incomes in this um, park. Is there any help for helping winterizing some of these trailers? Because they are a lot of 85 you know, years. I know my trailer's in 85. Um, I've done some work on some of the trailers and you take off the siding and all those is insulation. <laughs> it's really scary, but uh, so is there any help for us? Yeah, so um, right now we, um, the weather weatherization assistance program, that is definitely something that um, folks in mobile homes can ap apply for and also cover home repairs, doing a lot of work on, um, on mobile homes. So they have um, 
some some ways to do weatherization in mobile homes. And is there anything, any other programs that you want to highlight? Yeah, I'll, I'll just add that there we're aware that um, there are limitations, like sometimes you submit an application and you're put on a wait list. Um, and we recognize that can be a barrier to some people. Um, and what we always try to say is, well, one is that it is income based, right? So um, you need to make sure that you would qualify for that. And that wait list is then um, dependent on a bunch of different factors, not just your incomes, and it can fluctuate on the daily. Um, so it's hard to say how long people might be on the wait list for that. And so what we do when we're, um, when what we suggest when doing outreach is encouraging people to apply for as many programs that they um, might be eligible for because if you, uh, you know, you might be on the wait list for um, for free weatherization for maybe a year or two, but in the meantime, maybe um, the next season cover can do some um, some window window stealing for you. <laughs> I'll also add that um, cover right now is adapting to the whole COVID situation and figuring out how they can do that safely. Um, so just so you know, they are, they did end up suspending operations earlier in the year and then resumed um, in the summer to do out, outdoor work, but have, uh, are now reevaluating how do they do indoor weatherization safely. Um, and one of the options that they're evaluating is doing a DIY, mailing DIY kits. Um, so that's something that um, if you I would recommend these people either reach out to the community action agency in their town, um, reach out to cover. Um, and as Becca or rightly noted, sometimes when you're trying to do weather station work, you realize that there's other things that need to get addressed, um, like home repair things. Um, so I would also recommend if it is a more home repair thing, looking at some of the USDA grant programs to see if they're eligible. Um, there, there are plenty of resources. Okay, thank you. And I just threw in the chat, just so folks can see, um, Michael, um, if you don't mind, what town, do you know if you're in Sevka's territory, what town are you in? Hartford. Hartford. Oh, Hartford, oh great. Hey neighbor, I'm in White River Junction. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> so uh, behind Mascoma Bank. Anyway, um, so I put in the chat the link to the Sevka page and then their application in PDF. I don't know if there's an, like a fillable one they have on their website. I couldn't find it. If, I don't know if either of you have it, but that's always easier. And then Cover does have a form that you can just fill out online too. And yep. you would be a great candidate for either of those. And we did send out mailings. Um, so hopefully you would be, if you're in one of the mobile home communities, you will be receiving one of the guys that Julia um, just showed on the screen. And, we, and we did get a mailing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. You guys are awesome resources. Thank you for sharing all that information. Um, any other questions? I have a question, but any other questions for, for Julia or Anna? All right, well, I'm, well, I'm wondering if, um, since we're working with Jeff forming this uh, Tri-Town Energy Committee, if you all work with Rochester, Hancock, and Pittsfield, just curious if this is an opportunity uh, for, for these towns. Uh, is, is that a question looking at the map, map, we're just, Rochester's just uh, to the west of where the map was, Bethel, uh, and, Bethel and Randolph, uh, just on the other side of the ridge. Okay, I missed the map, sorry. Uh, so I think uh, Capstone actually picks up Rochester only because it's easy for them to continue down from Granville and Hancock to, to Rochester and over here, the population is such that the county lines and the service lines and town lines get a little skewed. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got about uh, 10 minutes until one. We don't have to go until one. But if there are further questions for anyone, I'll open open it up um, and to all of our speakers. I'll add a comment just regards to like service areas and like who, who might um, want to 
engage with this type of outreach. Um, we've gotten, you know, vital communities works on both sides of the river. However, the grant that we got for this project, unfortunately, is only Vermont restricted. Um, so we often get requests from the New Hampshire side of, you know, we, we want to do this too. So like, how do we do that? And it's uh, unfortunate that our um, grant dollars can extend there. But what we are mindful of doing is just really documenting our process and our templates, um, similar to our weatherize and solarize campaigns, creating a toolkit so that if another community down the line wants to do this, they they have the whole step by step how you, how you do it. They're not, you know, re rebuilding the wheel. Is that saying? <laughs> Becca, do you know how, um, I think it was Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity that did the Waltham project. Um, was there extra grant money available that enabled that? Um, because that was 14 mobile homes replaced by Vermods um, with solar and with battery. I know they got help uh, from Green Mountain Power on the battery side of things. So yeah. I, I don't actually have a lot of info, information on that project. I know like Phoebe Howe, who was with Efficiency Vermont, was really engaged in that. So I can look up. Um, Dwight Craig Peltier with uh, Vermont Housing Conservation Board would also know too. But yeah. They, I'm just curious as to how they had the money to make that big a, a change in, in the whole park. Um, Jeff, does does zero energy now sound familiar to you? Yeah. Is that the project? Was was it funded through that program, or or, or no? Is that totally separate? I think it was separate. Separate. Okay. I zero know energy now is designed to be a uh, a, a deep weatherization. Uh, yes. Yeah. Deep energy retrofit, uh, taking an existing home to net zero. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I'd have to look at the Vermont site, actually. I'm just trying to see if I can find how they funded it. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm not finding anything right off the top. But let me follow up because there is some interesting pieces to doing that with, in combo with Vermont, kind of to your point, how to do the replacement side of things. I'm going to share my screen again um, just to put up our contact information. And for whatever reason, I can't get it in presenter mode uh, and keep Zoom up. So I'm, I'm, I'm messing up somewhere along the line. But you can still see our contact information here. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you can see our contact information. Good. Good. So I'm sure that uh, if if future questions come up, I'm happy to try to answer those questions. And I'm sure um, Becca and Julia would be as well. Um, thank you, Becca. Thank you, Julia, for your presentations. Thank you, Anna, for helping to answer those questions. Um, and thank you all so much for coming. And, and lots, of, lots of good questions came up at this presentation. Like I said, we've recorded it. So um, we will be posting it, um, getting it out, but please feel free to help us spread the word, you know, send this to your energy committees, get it up on Facebook and wherever else you think uh, other, other members of your community might uh, access this presentation and hopefully it will help. Any final closing questions or comments? Yeah, I have one question. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, looking for plumbers that are reasonable i i know i have one family that i know of in here that is in need of a plumber and um outdoor leaking pipe. it's an out kind of an outdoor leaking pipe that's underneath the trailer and um i guess i don't know where to send it That's a tough question. And I'll just say you're not alone in that where we're experiencing a, a deep shortage of electricians, plumbers, contractors in our state. So are you looking for someone who will provide a service for a lower cost? Or are you just looking for like a list of, of folks? Um, Is there any emergency help for that? Well, first, yeah, any emergency help because the 
yeah. I don't want to talk about the family, but I okay get what you're saying. Okay, um, yes. But I don't know, Anna. I does cover cover does cover cover. Um, no, it doesn't do plumbing. Okay. No, um, uh, I can't speak in terms of like you know financial assistance. Well, I mean for finan- for that type of stuff, maybe like the home repair um, lo- grants and loans might might be an option. But in terms of just a, a list of kind of vetted contractors, I we did discover um, that the Vermont Center for Independent Living keeps mm-hmm. a, a vetted contractor. So I'm happy to share that resource. Um, I'll say I don't, don't exactly know what their vetting process is, um, but that that's a resource we discovered and are happy to share. Awesome. Becca, it looks like you just posted in the chat the uh, contract, find a contractor uh, function on Efficiency Vermont's website. Does that include uh, plumbers? Yeah, it doesn't. You know, I was thinking it probably won't find exactly who you're looking for, but a lot of the folks who do some of the services that you might find someone. If you type in the, your zip code, you know, put 05001, pop it in there, you'll find a list. I don't necessarily know if they would be able to support the question you're asking for with plumbing, like a plumbing problem. Um, it's a tough question. Yeah. Might that also be a referral to Sevco? Yeah. I mean, that's a great, yeah, good job. That's good. Uh, is it heating? No, it's, 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 it's water, drinking water. It's line. That's, I would call 211, you know, Vermont 211. First, like, that's. Point. Yeah, they might be able to assist. Great. Great. Good questions. <laughs> Thank you an awful lot. All right. Well, that's about it for time. Uh, one last question. Or are we or are we all set? Looks like we're good. Well, thank you again so much for being here. Um, hopefully this was helpful and uh, look for the recording on our website. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye. Thank you very much.